Hey Sun Space Sun, I'm Daisy Victoria, and I just completed this amazing 18th century gown. This dress is inspired by 1780s fashion, and I'm so excited to share with you how I made it. This is such an exciting period with such exciting dresses, and this is just so cool. So let's dive right in. So we are getting started with Patterns of Fashion 1. So I'm primarily basing my dress on this one. This is 1775 to 85 Snows Hill Manor. So this is an open gown worn over a petticoat. So basically what I need to do is I need to enlarge this pattern. This is the petticoat. I already have that. So I'm going to base my gown on these pieces here. There's basically a little grid of squares there, and I need to copy the pieces basically onto a larger grid. So basically what I'm doing to enlarge the pattern is I'm taking these shapes and all those squares are set to be one inch. So you can use this on any type of one inch paper, you can use wrapping paper. I'm actually using a semi-transparent fabric on top of my cutting mat which has one inch squares marked. So basically what I'm doing is I'm coming over here and figuring out where each point or kind of like the edge, a corner of a pattern piece is, copying it onto the fabric and then counting how many squares up and over I go to find the next point and then drawing my lines accordingly. my stays on and I'm gonna try on this mock-up. Okay, wow. <laughs> um, guess who's exactly the same size as the dress in Patterns of Fashion? So up here my stay straps seem like they come out a lot so I might want to extend these shoulder straps just a little bit to make sure it covers. But other than that it's, <laughs> it's really good. This is awesome. Yay! So excited. <laughs> With the mock-up completed and a couple of small adjustments made, it's time to work on the real fabric. Now some of you may remember from a prior video in which I made a folk dress using authentic fabrics from my district that my hometown is Ikea. So what better place to get the fabric for this beautiful new project? That's right, I used a fabric proudly manufactured by my hometown, Ikea. This fabric is called Schelk Brachen, which I don't think really means anything. It's kind of similar to Schekbocken, which is a toboggan run. 
I would actually love to try this dress out on a toboggan run, but unfortunately it's summer right now, so I'm going to have to wait until winter and try to find some snow where I could get on a toboggan. Also, if you get really creative, I bet you could find more ways to make amazing toboggan outfits out of this fabric, but you don't have to because the name isn't quite Shackbalken. It's instead Shek Brocken, so it's okay if you make things that are not for toboggans. Um, just kidding. After I recorded this voiceover, I realized that I had actually swapped two of the letters in the word, and this fabric is called Kalk Bracken. Kalk means lime, and Bracken means like a fern, so I guess this fabric is a lime fern, but I still kind of like the image of sledding better. What do you guys think? This fabric is fairly substantial in weight, however I am still doing a lining. My lining is a plain white muslin cotton fabric, and the outer fabric is 100% cotton as well. Now here you can see the sleeve. There are these pleats at the top around the shoulder and then also at the bottom around the elbow. And that gives the sleeve that really nice shape where it just kind of sits on the arm over the shoulder and around the bend of the elbow. At this point, I'm ready to put in some boning. Now remember that under this dress, I'm wearing a pair of stays, which is very sturdy and well-constructed. You can see how I made it in a prior video. So for the dress bodice, the purpose of the boning is really to make sure that the bodice stays upright and not, you know, getting all scrunched or wrinkly or anything. So I'm actually using the standard cheap plastic stuff, and I'm basically following the boning diagram from Patterns of Fashion. This is a very common boning layout for this type of bodice shape. Basically, you're reinforcing all of the seams, and then you've got a boning piece going diagonally across the bust. This is a style of dress that I've never made before, and that was why I chose it. I wanted to do something that was a little bit different. I have made a few 18th century dresses before. I've done a couple of the sack backs or the robe a la Française. I've done one that was inspired by the Marie Antoinette film, and this time I wanted to try another style that could fit in with the period. This period is really fun, and I think that it's something in which the dresses seem a lot more intimidating than they really are. In the end, it's just another dress. It happens to be a different shape with different pattern pieces. And that philosophy is what gets me through trying a lot of different things where I don't know what I'm looking at at first, but I know it's just another dress and I can do it. The skirt gets pleated onto the bodice. I followed the pleating diagram from Patterns of Fashion, so I marked where all of the pleats were supposed to go, and then I just pleated the skirt up.
with the skirt now attached, it's looking so good. I love the trim that was on the dress in Patterns of Fashion, and also you see this trim a lot in dresses of this period, so I really wanted to make some. I'm measuring out equally sized strips of my Schalkbrocken fabric, and I'm cutting these with pinking shears. That's because I'm not going to finish the edge, and the pinking shears give it some diagonal there, like it's all bias cuts, so it won't fray so badly. And that's something you see implemented throughout many periods in history. Here I'm marking equally distant spots along my strip so that I can start pleating it. If you guys watch Grant or Sizant's Costume Hunter series, you may have known that he identified this ruler as some sort of costume hieroglyphs since it's not in metric. Just another one of my weird things. This trim took a lot of time to do, but actually it wasn't as time consuming as I expected. And I think that in the end it's totally worth it because it's just that really nice added touch on the dress. There are a few little finishing touches we need to do at this point. Here I'm adding a ribbon tie into the neckline. The placement is marked in patterns of fashion like up by the shoulders where it starts and this allows you to pull in the bodice in the front so where it might be a little bit loose you just kind of tighten it there at the edge. And then I'm putting on all of that beautiful trim I just created. For the skirt, I hadn't actually cut pockets before attaching it. Usually I cut them first, but this time I wanted to go ahead and drape it before I cut them so I knew where to put them. So what I'm doing here is ripping off a section of the skirt so that I can cut a pocket slit. And finally, the dress needs some closures. I am using hooks and eyes. Something I added to my dress were these straps where I can basically tie up the dress skirt as a bustle. That's something you see in a lot of dresses from this period and it really helps with walking so that train is out of the way. Alright, let's see what it looks like all together.
I had a lot of fun trying a different style dress and also using another fabric from my hometown. I'm curious, friends, if you were gonna make or wear something that's different from your usual style, what would you choose? There are so many great styles out there, both real, historical, and imagined, and I'm so excited to try so many of them. I'm so pleased with the way this dress came out. I think it's so awesome and it just looks really lovely. I also had a lot of fun adding the blue streaked wig for a little bit of a fantasy influence because that's just me. I like fantasy. If you're interested in more in-depth progress on how I put the dress together based on the diagrams and patterns of fashion, well, patrons already have access to that, so go check it out. I had so much fun wearing this gown for a super fun frolic. It's just so joyful. If you're not already subscribed, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you see everything I post here. Find me on the social medias. I am Daisy Victoria everywhere. My website is daisyvictoria.com. And a special thank you to my patrons who help me so much to continue creating amazing content like this. I hope you all have a super awesome magical day and I'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye.